Now, as you can see, we've put together a plan showing the school site with all the proposed changes marked. This will be distributed to all parents, teachers and residents in the surrounding streets, that is Waverly Road, Wood Lane and Lower Road. So all, just summarize the main changes we've proposed. Firstly we plan to enlarge the school car park. As you know, parking is a problem and we would like to be able to accommodate all the staff cars as well, as provide a small visitor's parking area. That would be at the lower road end of the current car park. We believe this measure is long overdue and will stop visitors from parking on pavements and obstructing entrances. We also plan to install a pedestrian crossing near the side entrance in Waverly Road. The Wood Lane Crossing, which was installed three years ago, has proved very popular and I'm sure you'll agree that those children and parents using the side entrance need to be kept just as safe as those using our main entrance. Over the years traffic on both roads has increased substantially and that's why we also plan to introduce traffic calming measures in Wood Lane, which probably suffers the most. This, we hope, will keep the speed down to 20 miles per hour. New traffic signs will also be installed at the corners of both roads, warning drivers that children are crossing ahead. As some of you might already know, it has recently been decided that the land opposite the school on the other side of Waverly Road is going to be developed into flats and offices. Although I know there was some opposition to this plan, we at the school welcome the council's decision to develop this derelict land but we need to be prepared for many months of construction work next to the school. We've therefore decided that within the next three months we're going to erect a new fence. This will run parallel to Waverly Road and we hope will screen the playground from the construction site and provide better privacy and security for the children when they're playing. Our final proposal is nothing to do with security but we hope it will bring pleasure to many people. Our plan is to establish a garden next to the playground on the Wood Lane side and Mrs. Holmes has very kindly offered to supervise the project. We hope to get all the children involved in some way and we would welcome any volunteers among staff or parents to help with any heavy digging. If you have any comments on the plans or if you would like to find out any more, please come and speak to me or one of my colleagues. We would welcome your feedback and hope too. The thing that I particularly enjoyed was the violin concerto. It's one of my favorite orchestral pieces anyway, but the soloist was very good. She really managed to capture the mood of the piece. The reason why I go to events like this is because I like to see local talent and these performers were all excellent. What they showed me was how good amateur musicians can be. Something else that really impressed me was the age of the musicians. They were all so young. Some of them were only in their late teens and they were playing like professionals. What I didn't like was the venue. It was very small and it was difficult for the audience to see the stage. At least the acoustics were good so we could hear all right. Good evening everyone, and welcome to the new Midlands Arts Center. We are delighted that so many of you have managed to brave the rain and come out tonight to help us celebrate the opening of this new facility. I'm here to tell you a little bit about the complex itself and show you what is on offer here. But first, a little background. It was well over 15 years ago now that the idea was born to create a center of drama, music and art that would attract visitors from the local area and beyond. Our aim was to provide a place of entertainment for the whole family, which would also offer education and training opportunities to performers and artists from around the world, as well as the local community. With the help of local businesses, we aim to offer annual grants to up-and-coming artists who might otherwise be unable to fulfill their dreams. As you will see when you look around, we already have an exhibition of two young local artists. You will find that in Exhibition Room B. I must admit, I've never been a big fan of abstract art, but I was blown away by the exhibits on display by these talented youngsters. Exhibition Room A houses our other temporary display. This one includes sculpture made from recycled objects, and a collection of film posters from the 1970s and 80s, a must for any film buffs out there. 
The Reese Gallery houses R. Permanent exhibits, which include a collection of historical photographs of the local area and work by local artists, Gemma Brock and Giles Priestman. There will be guided tours every 15 minutes throughout the evening. For any budding young artists here this evening, we have a drawing workshop starting in five minutes with celebrated local cartoonist Andy Minot. Andy will be sharing some techniques for creating caricatures and showing some of his most famous works. You will find Andy at the back of the Reese Gallery and all under 16s are welcome. There are many other events taking place this evening but I haven't got time to go through all of them. Your program will give you details. I've just picked out a few of the highlights. Later in the evening there will be a performance from the Midlands Youth Band and Dale Park Youth Choir. This is the first time they have performed together and I can guarantee that it is not to be missed. They are performing tonight in the Gilbert Theater at 7 p.m. But don't worry if you miss that one, they will be on again at 8.45 p.m., this time in the studio. Be sure to get there in good time. Another important event tonight is a talk by local writer James Carver. He'll be discussing his series of historical crime novels and reading from his latest book, The Secret Stone. He will also be signing copies of his books. I know he has a lot of fans out there so make sure you go along. The event starts in the studio at 7.30 p.m. Finally, the big event of the evening will be a performance by the award-winning Simon Bradford and his jazz and blues band. Simon has recently completed a sell-out tour of Europe and has just released a new album and we are delighted he has traveled all the way from his home in Canada for tonight's performance. His show and album have received fantastic reviews and I really can't wait for this. Be sure to be seated in the Moffat Hall in good time for the show. It starts at 9 p.m. and will be the final event of the evening.